For solving linear systems, the nicest case is going to be that of simple eigenvalues, real distinct eigenvalues. That's when life is good. The idea is that we're going to decouple this linear system from a linear algebraic point of view. That means we're going to diagonalize the system. Okay, so here's the nicest possible case. A is two by two. We have eigenvalues, lambda one, lambda two, distinct and real. We have eigenvectors v1 that goes with lambda 1 and v2 that goes with lambda 2. Now what do we know about these? They're eigenvectors, so they must be non-zero. And because these two eigenvalues are different, they must be independent eigenvectors. If they were parallel, then they would have the same eigenvalue. They would span the same eigenspace. That means that we have a basis. These are independent eigenvectors, and we've got a basis, an eigenbasis. I like that word, eigenbasis. Yeah, right, but what are we gonna do with that eigenbasis? Well, we know by definition, AV1 equals lambda one V1. AV2 is lambda two V2. I'm going to take that set of two matrix vector equations, and I'm going to write it using matrices. We're going to be able to write this very, very compactly as AV equals V lambda, where capital lambda is the diagonal matrix lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. And capital V is the 2 by 2 matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors V1 and V2. Now you can check that AV equals V lambda writes out those two eigenvector equalities. And now, once we've got that, now we can get rolling. Here's a lemma. A to the nth, that is the nth power of A, can be written as V lambda to the n, V inverse. And lambda to the n is something that we know how to compute, right? Okay. Is this difficult? No, not so bad. Here's the proof. I know because AV equals V lambda, and V, having independent columns, is an invertible matrix, I can write A as V lambda V inverse, so that A to the N is quantity V lambda V inverse to the N. Now, if we write that out, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get V lambda V inverse times V lambda V inverse times V lambda V inverse. We keep going. And what I see is that we have incident copies of V and V inverse. Those together multiply to be the identity matrix. The identity matrix does nothing. And so in the end, what we get is V followed by a whole bunch of lambdas, how many? N, and then V inverse tacked on at the end. That's it, that's what we're trying to prove. Now, this explicitly solves the linear system in discrete time EX equals AX in this nice case where we have real distinct eigenvalues. Let's keep going. In this same case, we have the lemma that e to the a t, the matrix exponential, is v e to the lambda t, v inverse. And e to the lambda t, lambda's diagonal, we can compute that. Okay, how do we prove this? It's going to be basically the same idea. By definition, e to the a t is the sum. n goes from 0 to infinity, quantity a t to the n, divided by and factorial. Now that a to the n I can write as v lambda to the n v inverse. I have that t to the n, but that's a that's a scalar. I'm multiplying all the entries of the matrix by that. So I can move that around. I can I can move it to the right, move it back to the left. I can regroup things so that what we have is the sum n goes from zero to infinity of v on the left, then in the middle lambda t to the n divided by n factorial, then on the right, v inverse. And because those v's are constant, I can pull them out of the summation, and I can focus that summation just on the terms that have n dependence. So in the end, what I get is v times the sum n goes from zero to infinity, lambda t to the n over n factorial, followed by, post multiplied by, v inverse. That is what we were trying to show. Now, this makes it possible to exponentiate a matrix in the simple case. And really, this is all just a change of basis, a change of variables that you may have learned in your linear algebra class.
at this point, an example would be in order. Let's do a simple one. Let's say that A is the 2x2 two two matrix with columns 2, 3, and 5, 4. I'm going to leave it to you to check that this has eigenvalues lambda 1 equals 7, lambda 2 equals negative 1. The corresponding eigenvectors are v1 is 1, 1, and v2 is 5, negative 3. To solve the discrete time system, ex equals ax with initial condition x0 and y0, then what do we do? The vector x at time n is really a to the n times the initial condition. a to the n is what? I take the matrix v, whose columns are eigenvectors. That is 1, 1, 5, negative 3. Then I take lambda to the n. Those diagonal entries are 7 and negative 1 to the nth power. Then I post multiply by the inverse of this matrix capital V. That is, I take 1, 1, 5, negative 3, invert that. Then I multiply this whole thing by the initial condition on the right. Now, computing that inverse is going to take a little bit of work. Doing all this matrix multiplication is going to take a little bit of work. But if you do that, then in the end, you get explicit solutions for xn and yn. These are 1 eighth. I got to pull out that constant that we get from taking the inverse of this matrix. Yeah, I get 1 eighth times the first output is quantity 3x0 plus 5y0 times 7 to the n plus 5 times quantity x0 minus y0 times negative 1 to the n. And then for the second output for the yn term, I get quantity 3x0 plus 5y0 times 7 to the n minus 3 times quantity x0 minus y0 times negative 1 to the n. Okay, you can see kind of how that matrix multiplication and that inverse contributes to this solution, but that's it. It's explicit. We're done. And once you've done that, it's super, super easy to turn around and solve the continuous time system. dx equals ax, again, with the same initial condition. What do we do? We exponentiate this matrix. We compute e to the at, multiply by x0. Little bit of work following the same pattern, we're going to get... I've got a 1 8 on the outside. The first output, x of t, is quantity 3x0 plus 5y0 times, and here's the difference, e to the 7t plus 5 times quantity x0 minus y0 times e to the negative t. You see the difference there? The second output is going to be much like before, quantity 3x0 plus 5y0 times e to the 7t minus 3 times quantity x0 minus y0 times e to the negative t. This is so nice. Oh, it's so easy to do this. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's maybe kind of messy, but it's also kind of nice. I mean, this is the nice case. This is the best that you can get. It's still, it's not easy.